Welcome to Storytime Part 1. Uh, this is a children's book called At Gleason's Gym, and it was uh, written and the illustrations, illustrations were done by a gentleman named Ted Lewin, L-E-W-I-N, and sorry if I mispronounced it. Um, uh, unfortunately, I just read that he, he passed away in 2021, so rest in peace to the author-illustrator of this uh, children's book um, about Gleason's gym. And the reason I chose to, to uh, share this book with you is because I think it really, really captures the atmosphere at the previous location of Gleason's gym, which was 75 Front Street. And Gleason's gym is now at 130 Water Street, just around the corner, but the 75 Front Street um, facility it just evokes a lot of uh, memories for me and I'm sure for a lot of other fighters and visitors who pass through there because it just it had a distinct feel and I I really feel like this book um, and especially uh, Mr. Lewin's uh, watercolor illustrations really capture the atmosphere at 75 Front Street so I'm hoping that for anybody who frequented that gym or who even visited, you know, hopefully this will uh, stir up fond memories for you as well. So before I, I switch uh, switch over, I just want to share the cover with you. I do know for sure this is uh, Wayne Braithwaite, or Wayne Brathwaite, depending how you want to pronounce it. And he's um, he was a cruiserweight world champion. I know for sure it's him because he's wearing his uh, Guyanese colors on his um, on his bandana. So I know for sure that's him. Uh, the other three folks represented here, I'm, I don't know who they are. If you are one of those people or you know who they are, please comment below because it would be interesting for us to, to know where they are now and what they're up to. Okay, the back I think is interesting because now I'm not sure whose nice neat gym locker this is, but um, the way it worked at Gleason's gym was there's probably, you know, I'm not even sure, maybe two, three dozen uh, boxing trainers there. And folks, they would get their own double door locker. And that locker was kind of like the trainer's haven and their office and their home and uh, all of the above. So you dare not go take something out of another trainer's locker without asking first, even though they're all open because... You know, trainers constantly going in and out, gloving people up, getting sparring gear, uh, Vaseline, ropes, this, that, and the other. Oh, and speed bags and double end bags. Because the way things worked at Gleason's gym was to bring your own speed bag, bring your own double end. Um, there were the hookups, um, setups, but every, every trainer had their own speed bags with the swivel so their fighters could uh, install the, sw the swivel the speed bag into the um, speed, bag speed bag rack, and there were also hooks provided for the double end. But you had to, go, your trainer had to provide the actual double end and hook it up, top and below for you to use. Um, so I just thought this was an interesting choice to um, show the locker because it does. That was very much a part of uh, Gleason's gym culture with all these trainers' lockers surrounding the perimeter. And um, you, you knew exactly where your trainer's locker was and et cetera, et cetera. Um, that was an important part of uh, the layout. And the other thing I wanted to just mention was like, okay, there's definitely this beat up table looks familiar. Um, at the time, uh, lots, of, lots of guys would, lots of the trainers would play dominoes to kind of kill time between um, training sessions. Um, and... Dominoes is a great game because it's so fast and you can you don't have to remember anything from from game to game. You just pick up and go and go work if, with your fighters and then come back, play a couple games and 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 go back to work again. And it, and you don't have to. There's no continuity. It's just a game, right? Um, but Gleason's gym is where I learned to play dominoes. Probably maybe maybe on this exact table or one very similar to it because I just recognize the very beat up edges here in this. Um, it just looks super familiar. Now the other funny thing is this chair. And what's the big deal about the chair? Well, I don't know why it is, but every single gym I've been in 
has one of these beat up upholstered wheelie chairs. They just, they always find their way to boxing gyms for some reason. I guess it's because trainers or whoever like, like to be able to wheel around and I don't know. But there's one at the gym where I'm training right now. It's like it really should get thrown out, but it's still there and people still sit in it. Um, I, I don't want to catch anything, so I don't sit in it. But it just seems like it's a, a necessity at every boxing gym. You've got to have a beat up wheelie chair. Okay, I'm going to switch mode so we can actually take a look at the book now. This shows us more or less the setting of Gleason's Gym on Front Street. So, of course, we have the world-famous Brooklyn, Brooklyn Bridge. And then this is the actual building. Uh, this is the building where Gleason's Gym is. It's a little bit off. Um, it's, it's more off to the side here. It would be out, outside the frame of this photograph. Now, this, this is not exactly the... Um, the approach, or the walking approach to the gym. Now, most folks who went to Gleason's gym to train, most of us took the subway. Um, and that would be the 2-3 to Clark Street, the A to High Street, or the F to York Street. But no matter which route you took, you, you, would, not, you would not walk along this route to get to the gym. You'd be coming from sort of off, off screen, as it were, outside the frame. You'd be coming from uh, probably High Street, which is off to the side, um, opposite where we're looking right now. This shows us, uh, but this shows us th the general um, setup of where the gym is. Okay, as we approach um, Front Street, you can see Gleason's Gym very distinctly had the single letters per window pane uh, up on the second floor so there's no missing Gleason's gym and then as uh as the author kind of points out in his illustration you could hear that thump thump of the speed bag kind of resounding and reverberating because typically these windows would be open just because they get so uh nice and uh, steamy with uh, body heat in in the gym uh so there'd be that echo of the speed bag because Gleason's gym at 75 front street was, um, it's, it's in a type of industrial warehouse type building Ab above on the floors above. There's some type of industrial, um, machinery factory going on. Cause every now and again, you would, you would hear the, the thumping and you could feel the, the vibration from, um, whatever work they were doing up here. Um, so because it's in an because Gleason's gym was in an industrial type setting, uh, the sound, the noise really echoed a lot. Now the actual entrance um, was over this side. Uh, we don't see the actual door right here, but once you go in that front door, this is what you would see. You would see a staircase going up, obviously to the landing. You turn, you go up the rest of the stairs, and this is what you'd see greeting you up at the top. Okay, once you turn and, and face the gym, through that th walk through those doors, uh, this is not exactly what you'd see. You'd, you'd see this once you get in a little further. But the entrance, uh, sorry, I'm looking at this upside down, obviously, but the entrance is back behind here in this area. Um, so the, the, the great thing about Gleason's Gym is that there were, there were uh, three boxing rings and one uh, professional wrestling ring. That wrestling ring was used by a gentleman named Johnny Rods and his uh, team of professional wrestlers. So here you see, again, you could tell this is the, the window um, with the letters in it. So that, that gives you a bit of perspective. We're on the second floor. Um, in front of the windows was where uh, Bruce had all the sort of workout type stuff, you know, weights, machines and whatnot. And then this is what I would call the front ring, the, 
the first of three rings. There's also a, a, a middle ring, um, not too far from this ring. The wrestling ring is behind this ring, this boxing ring. The, the wrestling ring is between this ring and the entrance. And then there was a third ring much further in the back, opposite, way opposite these windows. Um, and we'd all use all three rings depending on, on uh, the, the scheduling. But typically, typically this front ring, if there were, you know, if there was some serious professional sparring going on, typically it took place in this front ring for whatever reason. Um, so here you see a typical scene from a sparring session where folks pull up a chair to watch. You know, someone's, you know, other folks are just getting ready to start their workout. And uh, I'm not sure who these folks are, but um, I think this is a pretty, pretty accurate uh, illustration. Or it's a very accurate illustration because all the illustrations in this book are... Uh, are based on slides on on photographs that were taken so here we see a trainer um, gloving somebody up getting ready for them to get in the in ring and spar the sounds of Gleason's gym made an impression on uh, Ted Lewin uh, because he, he constantly references all the noise I mean something that can't be captured in uh, an il illustration but I, I imagine that, I guess that I just got sort of um, immune to that noise or just became part of the scenery type thing. So you know, I, I just wasn't as aware of the sound just because that was the sound of the gym. That was the water we, we swam in. This illustration shows us the middle area. So the front ring would be in front of this and this is the back ring I was referring to. So it's directly opposite those bright windows in the front. Um, and in between this back ring and that the middle ring and the front ring, there's this area where all the heavy bags are hung. You did not have to bring your own heavy bag. The Gleason's gym provided you with heavy bags. And uh, there were always, um, there was always plenty of heavy bags there. And, and the other great thing was they were there was plenty of space so it wasn't so tight that you would um, bump into somebody else and uh, the other the other thing that not to gloss over is the way the bags were hung was um, there was enough length that they they swung properly which is no small feat because sometimes you go to a boxing gym and whoever hung the bags is not really familiar with boxing and so the bags either swing too much or this this top part is is is, is not long enough so it, it doesn't it doesn't move properly and a huge part of boxing is timing and rhythm so you you want to have the right feel when you're hitting the heavy bag and that that feel depends a lot on how it swings now here we are back at the front ring again and zoomed in on uh, one of Hector Roca, this is trainer Hector Roca, and this is one of his clients or fighters getting ready to start a sparring session. And you can see the, the weight equipment in the front a little more clearly in this illustration. Okay, this is the, an area, the air, the skipping area, which is off to the side between the middle and the back ring. It's off to the side of the area with all the heavy bags. So the this is the the uh, the main character in this storybook is Sharif Yunan Jr., um, who was also known at the time as Sugar Boy. Now he's a he's a grown adult man now, so um, hey, but this this book is mostly about him and his father, who was his trainer and still is. So here, this is a nice close up of of Junior Yunan. Hitting the, hitting the mitts with his dad, Sharif Yunan. And I can remember uh, when, when, when he first started, when Junior first started, he was maybe four. He was really, really young, and I, I couldn't believe his dad found him a pair of mitts, uh, uh, of gloves, rather, small enough to fit his, his tiny hands. But he was like maybe, 
a foot shorter than you see him in this illustration. And I just remember he used to hate doing mitts with his dad, but his dad would make him do it. He'd do a couple rounds and then he'd be so happy to, to get, be done and jump out of the ring and take his gloves off. It was, it was pretty funny, but you know, fast forward, he's now a, a undefeated professional fighter. So, uh, so all that hard work in spite of um, him, his resistance, it all paid off. Again, we have some more illustrations of, of working out. A young lady uh, working with a trainer. I'm not sure if that's Don Saxby. Might be. And here, this is a this is a, a, a lovely illustration of um, of the speed bag area. So against that red wall, this is the wall immediately. Um, by the entrance, so if you turn and make a, a hard right, this is what you would see as soon as you walk through Gleason's gym. And uh, this young man standing on a chair, uh -huh. it was always, they always, there were all these these uh, metal chairs floating around. But um, for, fortunately for me, I didn't need to resort to a chair. I would stand on this uh, wooden crate thing, and that was that gave me enough height to hit the speed bag. So there were three speed bags here along this wall, and then there was another one, which was actually my favorite speed bag rack, uh, that was um, attached to one of these huge columns in the gym. Uh, again, it was an industrial building, so the columns were like three, it felt like they were two, two to three feet in diameter. The columns were huge and obviously solid as a rock, but um, that speed bag rack was great because it had a wheel to adjust it to go up and down and uh, you, you, you had quite a range of height that it could hit. So it could accommodate someone my height to somebody uh, well over six feet. Another shot of what Gleason's gym looked like in the sort of uh, sunsetting um, lighting. And th and this is this is a a, a lovely illustration because that's that does capture the feel of of the gym. Okay, and here we have, uh, here we have Junior Yunnan and his dad um, wrapping his hands next to Bob. And uh, it's funny, I do remember this this weird little table that um, Sharif Sr. is sitting on. It's like, it's one of those old school ab workout tables, so I guess that's why there's this metal bar, the handles here, for you to hang on to while you're doing ab work or something. A few more gym scenes. Um, again, if you recognize yourself or you recognize somebody in, one of these illustrations, please comment who they are. And now uh, Sharif is gloving up his son. So Sharif and um, Junior are towards the back of the gym. Again, this is the rear, this is the rear ring. And then we have a final illustration of Junior Yunnan with one of his belts that he won as a, as a junior amateur. And as I said, he's now an undefeated professional fighter. So um, it's interesting that this, this story kind of, it, it, it panned out in the sense that um, the protagonist is still boxing at present moment. All right, so that was my little presentation of that at Gleason's gym. I wanted to say thanks very much to Bruce Silverglade for the many years of, um, of training at Gleason's gym, 75 Front Street. And uh, Bruce kindly wrote a few words in the book. So God bless everybody at Gleason's gym. Thank you. And again, some more, um, I guess they are pencil-type sketches 
or pencil or charcoal of uh, of scenes at Gleason's gym. We got people hitting uh, Bob the dummy, shadow boxing, working out, whatnot. And Genev is sporting the Adidas Box Hogs, um, one of my favorite pair of boxing shoes, and I uh, still have plenty of those um, right until present moment. Oh, and here's, let's see, here's a young person wrapping up, getting ready to fight, getting ready to work out. Okay, another typical scene at Gleason's gym is just folks kind of sitting ringside um, watching the sparring. Here's some nice little illustrations of uh, little little scenarios that you see. Um, this was uh, this is trainer Country James, and he he kindly signed that for me. Um, I'm not sure that I recognize any of these others other silhouettes, but this is all they're very um they're very accurate and they're very kind of touching.